Fiji's interim Prime Minister Frank Bainimarama visited Australia for the first time in eight years to press the flesh with the Fijian community living here ahead of the September 17th election. Well, notoriously elusive when it comes to granting interviews, we were invited to attend a meet and greet at a Fijian curry house in Sydney in the hope of putting a few questions to him about the country's future. Loyal supporters from his party, Fiji First, had waited patiently for several hours until the military leader arrived and shared a welcoming ceremony which included drinking kava together. We thought things were looking hopeful when the Karen was invited to join in that kava tradition, but it wasn't to be. A couple of attempts swiftly rebuffed, and for us a small taste of just how tricky it is trying to speak to the presidential hopeful and former military commander. Suliasi Dayunitu Titu is the former president of the Fiji Democracy Freedom Movement based in Australia. Suliasi Dayunitu, thank you very much for joining the world. Thank you for having me. Well, um, let's talk about access to Mr. Bani Marama. How much access did you get to him on his visit? Um, we, we didn't get uh, access to the venue, but we initially were told uh, that there was going to be a um, uh, question and answer session uh, from 1 to 4 o'clock and uh, we got the uh, democracy movement from around Australia to be uh, to be there before um, that time uh, we made our way down to the venue at uh, 10 minutes to 1 at 10 minutes to 1 we were at the entrance of the uh, uh, of the venue uh, but uh, none of us were allowed in we, we didn't have any access to um, to the rally how frustrating is that, being uh, the Fijian community here, uh, to actually get a sense of uh, where Fiji is heading? That's correct. Um, and this was the best chance that we uh, thought we had uh, as the uh, diaspora here in Australia to, to ask him some, some serious questions about um, uh, his government, his party, and uh, how he he thinks that he can take Fiji to a democracy, uh, but that, as the as ABC themselves found out, they, we were all not allowed to, into the venue. Mm. So we're all familiar with the the way he conducts his rallies now. That he he sort of chooses. Uh, his audience. It is interesting though because he enjoys enormous popularity in Fiji itself, 60% uh, uh, approval rating, so a lot of people feel he's doing a, has done a good job. Yeah, well, um, uh, that can be uh, argued, uh, those, those, uh, those numbers. Uh, I think the poll is uh, being conducted by the Fiji Sun, which is now recognised as, as a regime uh, mouthpiece. Um, there is no independent uh, uh, polling uh, per se, but um, you can also uh, understand that the, uh, the figures coming out is also credited to uh, the regime um, muffling the media. There's no media uh, freedom. There is no uh, other in, uh, independent body to, to report what the people say and for the people themselves in Fiji if they say anything that goes against uh, the regime or to criticize the regime in any way shape or form uh, they, are, they are being uh, intimidated or um, taken to task. So what do you then make of the Australian government's approach to taking perhaps allowing Fiji back into that, that Pacific community and perhaps trying to instigate change from there? To the Fijians living in Australia, it seems like they are uh, condoning, condoning a uh, illegal government. Uh, they know very well how the Australian um, High Commissioner was kicked out of Fiji. Uh, these diplomatic relations have been damaged by this one person, and for them to be uh, seen as helping uh, Bani Maram, it could be because of um, Australia's diplomatic relations in the region or with Fiji. Uh, but to the Fijians themselves, it's, it looks like Australia is um, supporting is supporting this uh, illegal government. And would the diaspora that is here f feel confident about going back to Fiji, about a future there? Uh, for me myself, I know that I have a, a, I'm being blacklisted, and I have had dead threats if I set foot in Fiji, my own country, which is funny to say, coming from a Fijian, that you're not allowed to back into your own country. Mm. But uh, for the Fijians here in uh, Australia, there's a lot of people trying to seek asylum here 
for that very reason. They don't feel safe going back to that environment. Mm. People don't trust each other, uh, even relatives. If you say something uh, bad about the regime, uh, your own cousin or your own uncle goes and reports uh, what you say to the army camp, at the army camp and then you're being um, arrested, taken up to camp, tortured, and uh, the people are oppressed. Mm. So I'm not sure if they are willing to go back to a uh, to Fiji unless there is a free and fair election. So, Luasi, good to talk. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.